Hello good readers and good booktubers. This is the view from my window on the dive boat Ocean Quest traveling out of Cairns and that is my excuse and a very good one I believe for why I've been a bit behind on my reviews so far. So I'll probably post a review of the book that I read while coming up to Cairns. It was a collection of short, short stories. I probably, that was by Neil Ash and I'll probably review that eventually. I just want to do a quick note about the Future Eye collection, which I have here. It's edited by Isaac Asimov and Martin Harry Greenberg and Joseph D. Olander. It's kind of perfect for a dive boat. On a dive boat, bad things are going to happen to books in terms of salt, humidity and getting battered when everyone gets thrown around. This cover, which has got a pretty good image and which I enjoy, is in terrible condition and was when I bought it. This is not this condition is not my fault. So I'm going to do a quick review of the stories that I've read so far because I'm not sure when I'm going to get to the rest of them. And I want to have something to remember the early ones by. So the first story is Love is the Plan, The Plan is Death by James Tiptree Jr. Uh, this was copyright in 1973 by Ballantine Books and I haven't read enough of James Tiptree Jr. They're hard to get a hold of. Uh, I do like the writing when I get to it and this particular story I liked a great deal. It's a weird story. It almost doesn't feel like a science fiction story in that what it really is concentrating on is... Uh, it's hard to put a... Uh, a finger on. So you've obviously got this alien species that has got a reproductive cycle that is very different to anything that we see on Earth. I don't know where where the author got the notion from. Um, I'm pretty sure she was a psychologist, uh, but it's a wild notion. So Dr. Alice Sheldon, retired psychologist, there you go. You've got this situation where an emergent, emergent uh, juvenile of the species grows to maturity it falls in love with the a small red blob and later as the red blob matures that becomes the sexual partner for the what we later discover is the the male of the species who's been protecting it nurturing it and bringing it to maturity because the concepts are entirely internalized and because this isn't a post-industrial type species, it's an intelligent species, it's thinking about what it's doing, it's planning, it's got concepts, it certainly understands emotional attraction of, of the love kind, but the way it's written is kind of wild. I think it pro probably take a lot of people a long time to get into the story or get into the flow of it, because while the writing is beautiful, it's very atypical to a lot of science fiction. So that was the first one. The second one is caused, called Closed Sicilian by Barry N. Malzberg. It's from 73 and it restored my faith in my memory a little bit. I remember enjoying Malzberg's work but recently I've read two novels of his and I not only did I not enjoy them, I kind of despised them. I didn't like the writing and I was really quite annoyed by that because I remembered Malzberg as being an author I liked. So here in this one, you've got a situation, which I'm pretty sure I've read this short story a while ago, but I really enjoyed it this time because I hadn't read it for a long time. You've got an individual, obviously human, who's playing another a game of chess against another individual, also human, for the fate of the galaxy, basically. And the intoxication with the idea of chess being played to secure the safety of things or as, as an alternative to war is something that ex has been explored I think in quite often in science fiction and fiction in general. Here Malzberg does a good job with it. Each section has got something like 1.p-k4. I assume that means something to people who play chess. I don't play chess. It's very easy for me to get bored by stories about chess but not this one. This one flows along nicely and because it's the emotive experience of um, this individual who's playing against, he's playing against an old friend, they'd grown up playing chess together but now 
they're playing for the fate of the galaxy. His friend has gone over to the dark side, as it were. He's playing on behalf of the aliens. And because it talks about the individuals and their background, this is a really, really good story. And that very, how shall I say, self-involved main protagonist that Malzberg seems to do each single time works well in a short story in a way that to my way of thinking really didn't work at all well in the two story, uh, novels of his that I read. Story number three, Transit of Earth by Arthur C. Clarke. Not sure I've ever read this one before. This is a great story. I really enjoyed it. So the concept here is that um, an a human mission has gone to another planet was it Mars? I think it was Mars and they sent a smaller shuttle down the shuttle's mooring collapsed the people are now three people were then marooned on this planet with no way to get back to their main ship and no way to get, to get back to Earth essentially condemning them. So this is the final thoughts and the final logs of this person who knows he's going to die and is musing on the three different ways that he can do that. Eventually, later on in the story, we find that his co-marooned people have both been uh, sacrificed their oxygen and their share of the remaining days so that he can stay alive and witness um, this eclipse of Earth traveling before the sun, something that only happens every 200 years, I think it is, and which is very emotive for him because it is essentially the last thing that he's ever going to see. In this one, Clark definitely showcases how good he can be with the heavy sciences, with the, um, I guess, astronomy and so forth. And yeah, great story, really good ending to it, Arthur C. Clarke at his best. Next we've got Bernie the Faust by William Tenn. Now William Tenn was a very talented writer who I seem to remember enjoying exceptionally. Bernie the Faust left me a little bit, I don't know, meh. I guess I'd give it two out of five stars, maybe three out of five stars. It's an interesting concept, and I've got a feeling I've read this one before as well. Maybe I've owned this novel in the past and I just don't remember it. In this, you've got some American guy. This was published in 1971, so I'm guessing... Oh, no, 1963. So I'm guessing it's a biopic on American 60s. So you've got this guy who makes his living from hustling, from buying and selling and deals, basically. And it's got a very American, very, I guess... Um, time and place feel to it so it will probably appeal to uh, people who like historical reading as much as people who like sci-fi anyway Bernie's Bernie is this guy sitting in his office he's uh, checking out the next sales for what he's going to buy next some guy turns up to his office and offers to sell him twenty dollars for five dollars so Bernie basically sits there and he, he rejects it because it's obviously a scam but then he overthinks it and he rings some friends of his and he decides eventually that he will go to this guy's office, he's left a card, and buy $20 for five, which he does. And then he starts trying to buy and sell more and eventually ends up selling the planet and he then has to figure out what he's done and how to buy it back. It's an interesting little story. It's got so much slang and colloquialism that I have to admit that I got a little bit left behind at times. But still, good book, good good story, enjoyed it. Now then we've got Ishmael in Love by Robert Silverberg. And that really, really good time and place. A 1970s story about a dolphin, an intelligent dolphin. One isn't sure if they've been extra adapted or what, but intelligent, he's fallen in love with a human woman and this is basically his story and since I'm out at ocean on the ocean chasing minke whales which are older and larger cousins of dolphins it was a good time and place okay that was a great one it's very nicely written so it's very literary 
Ishmael is the dolphin in question and he spent a lot of time um, reading up on love in order to impress the object of his affection, Elizabeth. It's a great story. It's very anthropomorphization of dolphins, but yeah, you know, still a great story. Okay, and that's how far I've got this book so far. And now it's time for me to go back out there and look for minky whales. Or possibly go diving. Such a hard life I'm having at the moment. See ya. Read good books.